Hi, and welcome to the podcast on writing free responses. Um, we're going to go over a couple um, or a little bit of information on writing free response. Um, all of this information can be found on Schoology for you to refer to at a later time. I'm first going to look at this uh, document here entitled Advice on AP Bio um, from those who grade. This is coming directly from the graders for the AP Biology exam and in particular it has to do with the free response questions. Um, on the AP exam, just for general information, there will be four free response. Um, free response are uh, basically a long answer question. So you will have 90 minutes to do these four free response. Prior to that 90 minutes, there is a 10 minute reading period. And I will go over uh, later in the podcast on what to do in that reading period because you shouldn't just be reading. Um, so first of all, if we start going through the document, uh, some of the things that come to mind are going to be the magical keywords or the keywords that are found within the uh, free response questions. The graders are looking for very specific things when it comes to these keywords. And so if you were to uh, misinterpret a keyword and answer incorrectly, um, you would get very little credit for that question. So it's important to know the difference between these keywords. Okay, so those keywords are identify, define, describe, explain, compare, contrast, um, discuss. And so it's very important that you read through that just to understand what each of those keywords is going to mean in a question um, to make sure that you're maximizing your um, your question answering. So I'm just going to go over some of this other advice because you can read through those keywords on your own time. Um, the first advice uh, from the graders is to be precise in your answers. Um, ignore uh, or try to avoid writing down as much information as you can on a topic. Um, try to avoid uh, things that are irrelevant to the actual question. You want to answer the question as concisely as possible. Um, so on an example or for an example, if it says to list three things and you list um, four, the markers will only mark the first three. So if your fourth one was amazing, you will not get credit for it. So it's important to know to, uh, to answer the question exactly. Um, now the other part to that is um, if in your rambling you managed to or you brought up a couple wrong examples or wrong um, statements, even though it has nothing to do with the question, you will be penalized marks um, for every incorrect um, statement and every statement that contradicts um, each other. So it's very important that you know what you're writing at each of the, the stages um, and to only write what the question asks. Um, when asked to give the effect of something, um, consider both positive and negative effects. Uh, this is true for the free response that it pertains to one of the, the AP labs. Um, oftentimes you will see describe the effect of adding um, such and such under these conditions. It's very important that you throw in both positive and negative effects that you would expect to happen. Um, the third point is that it, this is treated as an essay. Um, and so therefore needs to be in paragraphs with full sentences. Um, any type of point form or outlines will not earn you a lot of points. Um, the markers will try to mark it, but they will not give um, as many points because oftentimes you won't be clear in your outline. So it's very important that you do write in essay format. Now in saying that you do not need to use um, introductory paragraphs thesis statements or topic sentences. You simply will answer the question, but you'll do it in sentence form. Um, a quick uh, next point is just on um, pens, the types of pens, and I know this sounds silly, but you will use or you must use dark blue or black ink. Um, any other types of colors um, will be hard for some of the markers to mark, and so therefore you will not get good marks. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that if you use a fen or felt tip marker, um, you could end up making your exam el illegible. So use a ballpoint pen. Um, it's better on the paper that you're provided. And it's clear, especially if you're using dark blue or black. 
um, under no circumstances should you use uh, red. Um, now, next point. Uh, write large enough for the teacher. So this is the, the point on writing. You will get doc marks um, or you will not get as many marks if the grader cannot read your writing. Um, so make sure that you write large enough, make sure that you write clear enough, um, so that it's easy for those graders to mark. Um, now, next one, just answer the question without repeating the question. You don't have to repeat the question in order to answer the question. Be as concise as possible um, because there is a time limit. Uh, you have four free response in 90 minutes, so you're looking at about 20 minutes per free response. Um, if you factor in the rereading of the question, um, factor in any thought processes that may, may go in, 20 minutes is not a long time. So it's very important to be as specific as possible with your question. And that brings us to the next um, statement. On multi-part questions, so A, B, C, etc., start each of those on a new paragraph and label the parts, um, same as the labels in the question. So make it as easy as possible for that marker. They shouldn't have to look for your uh, response for A. It should be clearly stated A and then the answer. Um, okay, a couple other points. Make sure you practice them, and we're going to be doing lots of practice on AP exam questions. Um, something on graphs. Make sure that you label both axes of your graph. Make sure that you have proper units on those labels. Make sure you have a descriptive title for the graph. These are all ways to get marks, and these are all marks you would lose for not having that information. Um, now, two words that are going to come up, and we'll talk a little bit more about them um, in the lab portion when we look at uh, labs, because oftentimes there will be graphing involved in labs. If it says to plot, it just means to put data points on the graph. If it says to graph, it means to draw a line or a curve. Okay, so make sure you do not mix up those two words. Now, don't extend your curves or lines beyond the provided data unless it asks you to pre predict or extrapolate. Okay, and finally, if you need to put multiple curves on the same graph, um, make sure that the different curves are clearly labeled. Okay, so you can use um, dashes or dots to delineate those and make sure that there's a legend that goes with those um, lines on your graph. Okay, um, the next place I'm going to go is to Schoology. And in the course section of Schoology, I have put in the pages section um, a tips on writing for your response. And a lot of it is just what we've went through. Um, but there are some other things to note. And this brings us to that 10-minute reading period. Now, you have 10 minutes before you get your answer booklets in which to read each of the four questions. Now, that's a long time to read each question, but you are allowed to do a couple things during the reading period. Um, you are allowed to write on the questions. And so the this is what I would recommend as you... Um, or during that 10 minute reading period. Uh, first of all, is read all four questions. Decide the order in which you'll answer them. Do not choose the hardest question first. Answer the easiest question. Okay, and that way you'll have enough time when it comes to that hard one to try to get down as much information. Make an outline as you go. As you read the question, take about a minute, minute and a half, and jot down a quick outline everything I know about that particular topic and about those particular parts of the question. Um, as you read the question, underline those key words so you know what you need to do um, and you can go back and make sure that you've done that. Um, now, when you're writing your answer, a lot of this is um, the same as what we talked about before. Um, one key point that I want to make is don't overlook the obvious. Um, if there is a word, make sure that you define that word um, even at the beginning of your answer because sometimes that's worth a mark. Okay. Now, another point to note is that diagrams and pictures, they are helpful to support your response, but if you were to draw a diagram, 
um, you would not get any marks for it. So you can add a diagram to help explain something that you're having difficulty with, but it does not just work on its own. Um, now, after you've written your free response, uh, go back, reread the question, pay attention to those keywords, make sure that you've answered it, make sure that you've answered every single part, okay? And make sure you go back to the ideas, you jot it on the outline to make sure that you um, included them all, okay? And again, in the Schoology section are those keywords again, please go through those keywords, make sure that you know what each of them mean and make sure you answer what each of them mean on those questions. Now, a couple things that are here, um, that sheet that we looked at at the beginning, that's available as a PDF. Um, the next place I wanna go quickly is to the AP Central um, page because each of the free responses we do in class, so whether it's a lab or whether it's the free response itself, um, is based off of previous exams. And uh, a good keen student will be able to find the scoring guidelines for each of those questions. Now I'm not gonna tell you which exam it's from um, because I wanna get you to do a little bit of uh, research into looking up where you or where that question would be located. So on this uh, AP Central page, you can find under AP Biology Exam Information, a list of the free response questions. Um, this right here would give you the question. This would give you the scoring guideline, the answer key. Um, that answer key is in point form. And so if on a free response for me, you just jotted down as many of those points as you could, um, you would not get any marks. Because remember, it's gotta be in sentence format. Now the other thing I'm looking for is whether or not you can explain that clearly. So if you just wrote down a word but in your answer it doesn't look like it's explained, then I know that you're just copying from the answer key. So I'm really looking to see how much information you can gain from these. Um, some other useful information for some of the free response, they have score distributions. So it tells you what the average score was for each of those questions which gives you an idea of how you're doing overall on those questions. Okay, so each of our free response and the lab free responses will be found somewhere from 2011 down to 1999. It'll be up to you to sort of look through all these free response, um, become familiar with them all because what you will find is the AP exam tends to reuse ideas they don't necessarily reuse the questions, but they, you reuse the ideas from the questions and especially related to different topics. So getting to know these questions will help to get to know the AP exam. And that's why we're doing free response um, weekly and that's why we're doing lab free response instead of a lab report. Okay, remember if you have any questions, um, by all means send me an email through Schoology, um, through my uh, Edline account and uh, Good luck on this week's free response.